I was on penicillin. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Just keep 
I got something to show you. You're going to be able to...
St. Jerome's had a plan for a big post-war expansion. In May, it was reported that you could buy asparagus for two bunches for 19 cents, you could buy lean hamburger for 33 cents a pound, and you could buy Schneider Ring Bologna at the Dominion store for 21 cents a pound. <laughs> to prove that no, nothing stays the same, nothing is really new, 40 years ago there was a complaint about the fact that there was a scarcity of hospital beds in the region. And those of you who read the record last night would discover that 40 years ago, in November, it was decided to put an addition on the KW Hospital and also to put an addition on the hospital which was in Gulf. In November, it's interesting, was, there was an American election last night. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was given an impressive mandate 40 years ago and that ushered in the New Deal, and of course, it was quite an expression of confidence last night. And those of you who have been around in this region may remember that Joe Meinsinger entered the mayoralty contest. <laughs> Subsequently, he was named mayor in December. In November, for those of you who were interested, and this wasn't reported in the Kitchener Waterloo Record, Ken Murray was at HMCS Cornwallis in Digby, Nova Scotia. <laughs> I want to ask you all to stand, and I'm going to ask Al Meyer to say grace. Following that, I want to propose a toast to Her Majesty the Queen. And following that, I would like to observe one moment of silence for the 11 members of the 25-year club who passed away this past year. So would you now rise and now would you say grace? Our Heavenly Father, we extend a warm welcome to the new members of the 25-year club. Each one of us cherishes the precious moments of this event. Everyone enjoys the fellowship, the warm, friendly, relaxed atmosphere on these occasions. We appreciate having the Schneider boys with their unique sincerity making the presentations. And we are indeed mindful that a very kind and considerate employer makes all this possible. To them our sincere thanks. We cherish the memories of those no longer with us. Grace our table with your presence. Amen. Now would you raise your glass and drink with me a toast to Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> and now I would like to read the names of the members who passed away this past year. Teddy Ahrens, Wally Braun, Maury Herman, Dave Hilderly, Earl Holtzauer, Bert King, George King, Eddie Kirk, Vicky Krisak, Lauren Miller, and Al Adolf Sippel. Would you observe a minute of silence, please? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Dinner will now be served.
past. Ladies and gentlemen, let me first of all introduce to you our special guests. They are Mr. Henry Beban, President, Chief Operating Officer of the Heritage Group, Inc. Stand up, Henry. Next to him is Mr. Jack Foster, Executive Vice President, Janet Schneider. Steve Underhill, Vice President, Human Resources. Jim Ashman, Vice President, Controller. Paul Lavoidovan, Vice President, Sales and Marketing. Duck Dodds, President, Link Services, and John Lauer, Vice President, Manufacturing. They are your guests. I want to particularly welcome the retired members of the 25-year club. There is one gentleman that I have to particularly refer to in the audience because he is our senior 25-year club member, and Rusty, it is a joy to see you here this evening. Thank you for coming. And one person that we would all love to have with us. He is here with us in spirit, but the flesh just won't allow him to be here. I give you greetings from Norm. I began the evening by telling you what occurred 40 years ago in this area. And for the new members coming into the club, 25 years ago in KW land, in January of 1959, the KW Dutchman represented Canada at the 1960 Olympics. And you'll be interested to know that the KW region had 159,000 residents 25 years ago. And you might also be interested to know it was in that year that we got a new radio station, CKKW. And it was also in that year that John Diefenbaker, the late John Diefenbaker, decided to cancel the Arrow program. And it seriously affected a plant in this area. And you may recall earlier that I said you could buy ring bologna in, Dutch, or in Dominion stores at 21 cents a pound in 44, while in 1959 it would cost you 43 cents a pound. We also interested to know that in 59 it was decided that they would continue the 401 link to Kitchener. And those of you who now have cottages in Conestoga, it was at Conestoga Lake, it was in that year that the planning chief approved that the cottages could be built. And if you were buying gas in 59, it was going to cost you 31.9 cents a gallon. <laughs> And you might be interested that highway market doubled in size in that year, and that we also put a monkey in space. <laughs> it was interesting, of course, that the Challenger program was, uh, could not go off the ground today. How far we have come in 25 years. A lot of interesting thing went, things went on 25 years ago. Also interested, at least for me, that 25 years ago, a Clinton boy Stephen Truscott appealed his murder conviction. And you remember earlier I talked about Joe Meinsinger? Well, dang it, he came back to run in the election of 59, and Harry Wombold beat him, but not to be undaunted. He ran again in 6061, and he was named mayor again. I think he was mayor of this city for another five or six terms. And you might remember that in that year, we had a million and a half dollar blaze in downtown Kitchener and the Jansen block went up in smoke and a few other pieces. And also in 59, we decided to make sports legal in Ontario. So I thought you might be interested in what was occurring at the time our new club members came in or this the year in which our new club members joined the organization. Normally at this evening, I take the opportunity to speak to you a few short and concise thoughts that I want to again this evening. As I have said on many prior occasions, this is a special night. 
special because in order for you and me to be in attendance, be a member of this club, you have had to have been a member of a special family for the minimum of at least 25 years. This family is special because all members of the family are employees of a company which is unique. Unique because no other company in Canada can have a group of meat and meat related products with this logo on it. No one else in this country can put their name on the product and call it Schneider's. This family had its beginning in a family, the Schneider family. As business grew and expanded beyond the point which J.M. and his family could handle, others were asked to join the family. This family now consists of individuals with common interests, common problems, common objectives, and roughly the same common values. This family can become commonplace if there is an absence of conscious dedication effort and care for the three things which you and I do. Employees who have been members of this family for 25 years or more should have a strong appreciation for what benefits have occurred to them as individuals because they have been associated with this company for at least a quarter of a century. You and I as 25 year club members are stronger together than we would be apart. Anything which you and I do for this family will have an impact in one way or another on each member of the family. Each of us have a job to do. And if I were to bring a group of employees forward, and I just selected some representative people, a salesman, a marketing person, a sausage stuffing employee, an employee who works in the beef kill, a maintenance man, and a president, and ask them to line themselves up in order of their importance, I wonder what the conversation would be. Well, let me speculate. The salesman might say, I sell the product. Don't you know that nothing happens until a sale is made, so therefore, I should be at the head of the line. The sausage stuffer would say, maybe. Well, if I didn't stuff the sausage, you, the salesman, would have nothing to sell. So therefore, I should be first. The beef kill employee might say, if I did not do my job in the slaughtering of the animals, there would be no trimmings. And so therefore, there would be no meat to stuff. So I should be at the head of the line. The marketer might say, if I did not create support programs and give direction to the production departments, product would not be in a position to be shipped, nor would the consumer be aware of the attributes of our product. So therefore, I should be number one. The maintenance man might say, well, if I did not maintain the equipment, nothing would work. If nothing could be done, then no product would be shipped. So I should be number one. And the president might say, well, I should be first because I am the president. If I did not have this company functionally organized with people in position to perform a whole host of support functions like financing and planning and doing things so that the company would be recognized as a good corporate citizen, slowly but surely the company would die and everybody would be out of a job. So therefore, I should be number one. Well, let me tell you, no one is at the head of the line. Rather than form a line, we should form a circle by holding hands. And when we do this, we demonstrate that you and I are all members of this family, and we demonstrate that we are truly interdependent. Nothing in this organization happens until we jointly perform the tasks for which we receive pay and we do it 
well and in a timely manner. Some three weeks ago, on a Friday evening about 5.30, I was leaving the plant. I had a meat order, so I walked down to the employee's market to pick it up. And on my way there, I noticed one of our employees who had broken his ankle was coming up the hallway on crutches, carrying what had to be about a 20 pound order of meat. And he was struggling diligently with that package. And when I got to him, I said, stand where you are, and when I get my meat, I will come back and get yours and carry it for you to your car. This he did and that I did. What disturbed me though was that there were a number of employees who walked by that individual without offering any opportunity or without offering that individual an assist. Ladies and gentlemen, within our family, reach out and help. Help a fellow employee in need, whether or not whether that need is physical or whether that need is to show an individual how to correct properly and correctly do his job. By our helping, we take a course of action which is in the best long-term interests of this family. One final thought. Each of us is special. Special because we have a job to do. And special because we belong to the Schneider family whose logo game is the Dutch girl and whose slogan is famous for quality. Thank you very much. And now, I want to ask her, Howie and Frederick, to come forward and make presentations to the new 25-year club members. Fred Urban Howe, please. Thank you, Ken. Now we come to the good part. This is what it's all about. We're going alphabetically, and uh, there are some observations I will have later on in the introduction. But, but the first, it's uh, Mr. Ken Anstead from the Fort Cutting Room. Uh, Ken is a brother of Joel, Charlie, Dennis, and maybe more, for all I know. There are Ken Ansteads on the payroll, and I think most of them are related. Ken is presently on the hands and mine. And as a skilled butcher, and after 25 years in the department, Ken can do about any job that there is to be had in that department. He's very dependable, and cooperative, and a super employee. Ken's not married. I don't think he's any wiser than the rest of us, but maybe he's a little smarter. I think he's resistant. can't hear me. But, but like right into it, I do that, Ken. And this is all. Okay. So Ken, would you come forward? Congratulations and welcome to the 25 year club. Now, the next fellow, uh, can you hear it now, Diane? No. 
I got to jump on it. Uh, so, so. Now, Bob Bast and I go back a long time, back in Caddick days and slicing bacon and lunch with me. And Bob, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce you tonight. Bob is a dedicated, reliable, and steady fellow, and he's mastered every job in his department. He's new, now finding a new challenge in the operation of that brand new way of slicing bacon, the Grody Leo bacon for the food service. Makes it so easy to, for the restaurant operators to fry their bacon. In his spare time, Bob finds regular workouts rewarding and maintaining his fitness. He expressed an interest in horses. I don't know whether he bets on them or whether he owns them or whether he's rewarded or what. But anyway, Bob has three children. And Bob, would you come forward? Congratulations. Glad to have you join us. I'm sorry that the next gentleman and his wife are not here, Bill Davis and Jean. That's not the premier. Uh, well, from DB, I don't know what DB is, but distribution, but anyway, he is a coordinator out there and helps to keep product moving through the distribution. So Bill, wherever you are, welcome. Uh, you can pick up your watch any day you want. Where will the watch be? Personnel? Personnel. So welcome, Bill. Hurt? Our uh, next member is also absent, uh, Ken Debo from the uh, uh, Beat Kill. Uh, Ken has spent almost all his 25 years on the Beat Kill. He's done every job in the department and is now the service man, uh, the one that uh, job that Donnie Wagner uh, used to have. Uh, Ken's certainly got an excellent work record. Between he and, uh, and uh, Artie Lawrence, uh, they've often uh, stepped in in emergencies and uh, run the department when their supervision was absent. I'm sorry that Ken is not here, but uh, a welcome to him. Our next member is here, Michael Deanish. Uh, Mike's from Bacon Slicing. He's worked his uh, entire service in the bacon slicing department, done all the jobs there, and is now a slicer operator. Certainly a very dependable guy. Uh, Mike appreciates the long, hot summers and likes to spend as much time as he can at his cottage in Perry Sound. Uh, Mike is married to uh, Gerda. Uh, she's here tonight. Gerda, uh, where are you? Would you stand, please, just to be recognized? Welcome. And congratulations to you. I'm sorry, our next member is also absent and almost sounded like a palace revolt or something. <laughs> this guy's hunting though. That's a that's a good excuse, isn't it? Um, Alf B. Drake from the bacon slicing department. Alpha is certainly a, a solid citizen all around, work, whole in this community. Uh, Alpha as well has an excellent uh, work record uh, and also in the other areas. So I think where he has been recognized for uh, uh, his uh, level headed, uh, common sense approach to things. Uh, Alpha has been uh, keenly involved with the school board for a long number of years and has served as the, the chairman of the one of the county separate school board. Uh, again, I'm sorry that he's not here tonight uh, with his wife. A uh, big family. Uh, I think Howie mentioned the Dietrichs, six children, ten grandchildren. You're not kidding about those big families. You're the necker. <laughs> David Eckert, a guy with a smile. Dave is now part of the supervisory staff of the poultry department after spending most of his service in the shipping area. He is knowledgeable, loyal, and dedicated. But what I admire most about Dave is his cheerfulness, enthusiasm, and positive attitude. You're a pleasure to work with, Dave. He enjoys his family and outdoor activities 
and has been active in youth organizations. And he's married to Mitzi. Mitzi, would you stand and say hello to us? <laughs> they have four sons, and Dave, welcome to the 25 Year Club. Nice to have you.
Congratulations, Jerome. from the 
freezer storage. Helmut is a serviceman in that department, having served in the department almost for his uh, full 25 years. Another quiet, conscientious person who can handle any job with confidence, and I think that's one of the reasons that he's on the service job. Away from work, he enjoys downhill skiing, fishing, and gardening. He's married to Erica, and they have two children. Erica, would you stand and be recognized, please? And congratulations, Helen. William McHugh, our next member from Warden Lard and Shortening. You, you probably don't recognize the name because everybody calls him Wink. I think that's what he's referring to be called. Um, Wink spent uh, 10 years in other departments, including lunch and slicing, but has been in the Lard and Shortening for 15 years and is now a deodorizer operator. He's a steady, very steady, dependable worker. Away from work, he likes and tinkering with old cards. I don't know whether that's a hobby or a has-to. Uh, <laughs> but um, Wink is uh, with his friend tonight, Inga. Inga, would you just stand and say hello? Thank you. Nice to have you, have you join me. Wink, congratulations. Between them, they have 
have one son. So Walter Moser, welcome to the 25 Year Club. Please come in.
Manhattan's area. He's now on a Toronto run. Lyle's a hard worker and never backs away from a tough job. Away from work, he has a unique hobby, collecting Avon product containers. You should call me a Johnny Carson Uh, he also likes a little fishing and parks a trailer someplace that he doesn't tell anybody. <laughs> Hope he tells Norma. Norma and his wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lyle and Norma have four children, and Lyle, welcome to the 25 Year Club. Hope you're here for another 20. Equal rights and feminine, feminine issues. 
<laughs> the next gal that we have to introduce is Marilyn Wilson of the Lunch and Slicing Department. Now, Marilyn has worked in Lunch and Slicing all over 25 years, and is now on the 302, or CM302 machine. That's the packaging machine that does the lunch and meat. The one that's giving us a lot of problems, but everybody's trying hard, and we're going to make because of Marilyn's efforts, because she is dependable, I'm sure we will, along with her fellow workers, and she's very easy to get along with and work with. When she can, she enjoys traveling on her time away from work. Her husband, Charles, are you here, Charles? Say hello. <laughs> and they have three children. Now, before I call Marilyn forward, uh, this, this feminism is not new this equal stuff, an equal opportunity. It starts right back at the time that man was created. And of course, God did his thing in six days. And on the sixth day, he, uh, he created Adam. He put him together and set him down in the Garden of Eden. He worked pretty hard. That was a, quite a complex uh, situation. He had all the nerve ends and twitching muscles and all that kind of stuff. Bones and cartilage and joints and it was quite a job, but he was capable and he, he pulled it off. And uh, he sat down that night, looked at Adam sitting on his haunches in the Garden of Eden. And that night God didn't sleep too well. And he thought, gee, I did a pretty good job. You know, that's, that, that, that's a feat that's not only engineering, it's biological, it's great. The guy can think, he's got a processor up here better than any IBM that I ever heard of. But he said, I think I could do better. And he did. He invented Eve. <laughs> so Marilyn, would you please come forward and welcome to the club. Now the reason I told that story, out of the 33 new members, we only have two ladies. So uh, you have to make up for all the ones that we're missing here tonight. John Wintercorn, I remember your dad, John Tony. What an entertainer he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only guy that could play home sweet home on a, on a whiskey barrel. <laughs> he got that tamper on the, on the hoop of the barrel and he got his hammer up there and we could hear him all over the plant. He could really, in fact, uh, we had him at the Lyric Theater one night to uh, uh, play with the Schneider Orchid's choir. And that's no lie, her, remember that? Went off the Fred Cox and we were all in the Lyric Theater, yep, we got Tony up there with his barrels and... <laughs> he had a heck of a time. <laughs> well, anyway, getting back to the son, John, empty. <laughs> it was going to be filled with casings and sent to Honolulu or something. <laughs> Uh, John is a kettle man, too, up in the roast meats department. And it's one of our hotter and heavier jobs. As well, he helps with many of the catering orders. And you'll see him uh, forking out pigtails and helping the guys up there quite often. John is very affable, willing, and dependent, and a dependable worker. Many of us here will remember Tony, as I said. And he was called a cooper, a guy that works with barrels. Uh, in his, oh, by the way, uh, Tony could have a pretty good mean night, too. In his off hours, John enjoys golf, slow pitch ball, and fishing. He's married to Sandra. So Sandra, would you say hello, please? And John and Sandra have three children. John, we come forward and welcome to the Oh, <laughs> 
Urban, how I thank you very much. During the course of the year, I started something, and that was to invite members of the 25-year club to come upstairs and sit down and have a cup of coffee, and I certainly appreciated the candidness with which the new 25-year club shared thoughts with me, and it's a practice which I will continue on through the year, and to those who missed me to pick it up, but again, to those who did come forward and sit around and chat for 15, 20 minutes, I very much appreciate it. Now, there are two people in the audience that I want specifically to come forward and accept 40-year pins. One is Roy Shanks, and the other is Ken Love. So Roy and Ken, I know you're here. Come on forward and get your 40-year pins. May am I?
And I was asking myself this question. Why did Burns close up in this town? And why did Schneider survive? What's the critical difference? And it strikes me, I can answer that in two words. People and values. I think we've had more dedicated people through the years. And if this gathering, in this room, isn't an expression of the dedication and the quality of people in our company, then I certainly don't know what is. And the second word is values. And that's the word I want to talk to just a wee bit. Values speak to beliefs. And we believe that we've had better product than anybody else. And I don't think there's any question about that. I spent a great many years with the sales force in this company, and no one ever said, Schneider's makes lousy products. Point of fact, everybody said, oh yeah, Schneider's, you make the great bacon or the great wieners. And that's a value. I remember going out west in 1970 and 71 to sell Schneider's in parts of the country where no one had ever heard of us or seen our product, shouldn't say hadn't heard of us, had seen our product and we made mention of the name Schneider's and immediately, you guys make that, those really good quality products and that's a value. We've also had dedicated employees, people who cared about the company and their jobs and that's a value. That's a value. Okay. Expecting an honest dollar for an honest day's work. That's a value. And those have been the critical differences between us and the companies who no longer are in business. Some of you may not understand companies like, like uh, Essex and Hamilton a number of years ago, White's Packing, uh, Coleman's in London, a number of plants from my major competitors, whether it's Canada Packers in Charlottetown or Canada Packers in Hull or Burns in Calgary and Burns in Kitchener are no longer operating. And the challenge to us, to all of us, and particularly to those of us in senior management, is to ensure that 25 years from now there will be another gathering like this. And it's not an easy task. And we're not always understood. It's not always understood what we're trying to achieve. But as I've, as I've said often to people, if I have one job in life, it is to secure the job of every person who works in this corporation today. It's the only thing that I have to do, that I believe on a personal basis, of value. Now we're undergoing, at this moment, a generation change in management in this corporation if you haven't noticed. And I hope you'll forgive me, but you'll have to understand that if you looked at the guests that were invited, a lot of new faces and a lot of young faces. And I think people like Herb and Fred, and, and perhaps not Fred immediately, but Herb and Ken, Dawson Jameson have retirement in sight. And we're going to miss them and what they brought to this company. And what the new generation of people in this company need desperately is to return both management and workers to the old time values. To understand what made this company truly great. Now, if I could ask one small favor of each of you in this room, it would be to spend some time talking to us, to us management, to us the new employees, and tell us and show us how you made this company what it is today. The foremost, the foremost meat processor in the, in the country with a lot of hard work and dedication, a company that will survive the turmoils and tribulations of the 80s, and that we will be here 
to at least induct me into the 25-year club 10 years from now, and hopefully a great, more people, a great deal many more people. Thank you very much for your attention.